Welcome to the Top Advisor Marketing Podcast brought to you by Proudmouth. I'm your host, Matt Halloran. Being your own loud is not new to marketing, but the mindset, strategies, and resources to help you get there are evolving faster than this industry is keeping up. It is time to find a new perspective on what works why and how to move your business forward. Listen as I interview guests to help you learn from them how to be your own loud. Let's get to the show. Hello and welcome to another Top Advisor Marketing Podcast. I'm your host, Matt Haller, and I got Kirk here. It's been a while since you and I podcast, brother. It has been. Why? A really long time. Because we're busy building a company <laughs> and we don't want to be a normal, regular company. We want to try to be great. And that's a lot of work. Yeah. But as but, influence- but we, We've carved out some time. I know. But as influence experts, we are really dedicated- going forward to setting a wonderful example and building actions and habits that um, do that. Having said that, even though I haven't been on here, we've been rolling like crazy. So we, we didn't get away from it. And luckily we've got two of us, but we find a way and, but we're going to get back to it here. So what are we talking about today? We got some fun stuff today. Yeah, we got some fun stuff. So this could be fun. This isn't even going to feel like we're doing a podcast because this is the sort of stuff that you and I talk about all the time when nobody else is really paying any attention. And we're going to talk today about the financial adages, colloquialisms, if you will, that financial advisors use on a regular basis and how applicable those are, what you as an advisor say to your clients and the things that drive you crazy that you have to say to your clients are so similar to the sort of stuff that we say in the world of marketing, and we're going to address each of those today. Absolutely. So I'll, I'll go first. And I'll, I'll, before I go, I want to say, look, we're having fun with this, but we're not, we're not really pointing fingers. Everybody has hypocrisies in their life and their business, and, and we just shared one of ours, right? Um, I don't know if it's hypocrisy, but whatever. We're going to have some fun with this, but these are serious things and they're true. And we, our job here, one of our big missions and purposes for Matt and I is to help people understand what marketing should be, what it really means. And until, if you own a business, until you really understand the purpose of marketing, like you really understand it, you're never going to be that successful at it. And we are, have learned that we're trying to share that wisdom, those experiences with everybody. And this should help us. This will give you an interesting perspective on how we think and how you think. Because in your, if you're a financial professional, you've been here, done what we're about to do with you. We're kind of calling you out on you doing it for your audience and being wonderful professionals that you are. We're going to do the same thing. So the first one is, this is one of the most commonly used phrases in financial services. It gets worldwide coverage uh, probably every day, a couple hundred times. And it's the philosophy of buy and hold investing or investing for the long term. It just amazes me, Kirk, that that advisors probably know that they're hearing that or like, dude, I say that in every client meeting, right? We say that in every client meeting also, because we believe in, in I, we haven't really branded this, but, but you and I were talking about this a couple of days ago, slow marketing, right? Really great marketing starts slow and gains momentum over time, just like their investment portfolios. It's the power of compound interest. That's what we're talking about here. Sl slow sounds, doesn't sound great, <laughs> but, but slow cooking yeah, does, yeah. right? Healthy at least. And, but what does sound better is compound marketing, but our favorite is momentum marketing. Having said that, not everybody understands momentum marketing, but momentum marketing is what you're really trying to do. So we can call it buy and hold marketing or compound marketing. Our preference is momentum marketing. And the idea with momentum marketing is that when you think of, think of marketing assets or, or marketing equity. When you're doing marketing activities, are you building marketing assets and equity? So when you build a website that becomes an asset that has equity, like it has value in your business. 
because it, it, the day after you put it up, it has value the next day or the day after that, right? So, geez, I'm not used to my mic in front of me. I, I've bumped it several okay, times. You're, you're flailing with your hands, brother. Keep going. Yeah, I know. We're, we're video on this as well for people who are just hearing it on audio. Hopefully it works out good. I comb my hair today, so I look pretty, pretty smart. And so the idea here, and you you and I say this a lot is the content that is created has value itself. It's like art, right? It's in, in, in the same thing that you're doing, building a really great portfolio that has value over time, the content that you create, the website, the video, the audio, the blogs, the social media content that cumulatively gets more valuable over time. Yes. hundred percent. So what we want to do is just, if you think about momentum marketing or the idea of compounding is that when you build something, it's worth something. And then you build on top of that. It's now it's worth more. So if you think about podcasting as an example, or, or doing video, when you have that video up there, it's out in the marketplace, it's worth something because it's still valuable. And when you get the second piece of content, third, the 10th, the 20th, the 50th, the 100th, in our case, the 400th or 500th, whatever, it is worth a lot. There's a ton of credibility in the fact that Matt Hallern has, has done a lot of podcasts as has proud mouth. Um, it's, it's a big deal. That marketing has equity. It is lasting value. If you were to do other types of marketing, more push oriented marketing, because the, the podcast is what we call pull marketing, push marketing sometimes doesn't have lasting value. If it's all you're doing, you're marketing, you don't, you're not building any marketing equity. So it's hard to create momentum, but momentum is what really gets you to the destination you want. From an influencer standpoint, that is having this celebrity or at least an authority level influence and potentially celebrity level of influence. We're not talking about celebrities that, that you see in the media, fame and fortune, that kind of stuff. We're talking celebrity in your niche, right? There are plenty of celebrity influencers in financial services. So um, those are the ones that, you can be that for your audience in your industry, in your niche, in your geographic region. So that's the first one. Hopefully that makes sense. What you want to take the next one? So, so the next one here is being diversified is the best way to be successful over the long term. So you want you take that one. There are different perspectives on this. The first perspective is that diversification, it depends on, on who your audience is. And so different, you could have people in the same niche who prefer different media. So you want to diversify so that you give them what they want. Um, so that's one of the ways. And well, as an example, if you're doing a podcast, why aren't you doing video? If you're writing a blog, why aren't you turning that into a podcast? If you're doing a podcast, why aren't you turning that into a blog? If you're doing a, a, a podcast, why aren't you cutting that up into little pieces of content for social media? So um, if you're doing a podcast, why aren't you doing a webinar? And before you do a webinar, why aren't you sending them your podcast so they can get to know you? And why aren't you talking about webinar and social media? Why aren't you talking about your podcast and social media? And then hey, why aren't you actually um, announcing your podcast and your webinar after? Go sign up. Like there's so many opportunities. Those are just a couple of ideas. Um, so think about diversification in your marketing because- I would say most advisors have some diversification in that. What do you think are the most common things an advisor would have? Everybody would have a website. They might have a blog, but I would say 95, maybe even more. Well, let's, let's go 99%. 99% do not have their own blog, but they probably have articles that somebody else wrote. Everybody's, almost everybody would have social media channel. Maybe not everybody. <laughs> maybe 80, 80, 90%. And what are some other things that everybody would have? Well, first off, 80, 90% don't have social media. I'm so glad of your optimism there, my friend, but that's so not the case. But but most of them have done webinars or seminars, right? And almost everybody's shooting video. And, and I mean, that's very, very pervasive right now because everybody from stages at conferences are talking about the power of video, but, but they're doing it poorly, 
right? And actually, what I, that really goes into our next point that all of you advisors say. So I'm going to bridge this gap very quickly, which is what you can hire a discount broker, Mr. and Mrs. Client, but you're really going to get what you pay for. You're not going to get the advice that you need with a specialist who only focuses and works with people like you. Again, that's niche focused. But, but again, so Kirk, you can see how that parlays immediately into, yes, you can just grab your phone and shoot a video, right? But, oh my God, when you get good lighting and what you're going to talk about in your practice and the distance from the camera, and you've got really great audio that changes the quality of things. So let's talk about, you get what you pay for when it comes to marketing. Yeah. I mean, if you're an expert in your field, right, we advisors preach this all the time that they've spent a lot of time in their profession there everybody thinks they know how what a good investment is how to pick a stock people are scared about in and out of the market but they certainly um, there's so much information about what you're doing just like there is marketing it, it's easy to feel like you have some sense and there's people who would talk to you about like it's so simple it's so easy to 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 pick stocks and run your own portfolio. Just listen to me here <laughs> on Twitter every day. And the reality is, is you've got to, um, you got to find people that have been doing this. It's all they do. They know it. And when you're thinking about marketing, look for those people too, and look for people who are being genuine and authentic that are, aren't trying to, aren't over promising. I think it's a real big thing is if you've got a company who's promising a lot and, and you, yes, you want the things that they're promising, but are they actually capable of delivering those? And are those the things that you really need from them in the first place? What's really interesting over the years is anytime that we use the word lead generation in an article, it gets so many more hits. And to be honest, for the most part, I've, we've avoided that over the years because we don't want to, but we've at, we've integrated it into our stuff. We talk about it a little bit differently. We talk about return on influence more than we do return on in, on investment because there are so many different ways to win at thought leadership sharing. But um, no doubt when you're looking for somebody, find somebody who has grounded advice. Um, they've been doing this for a long time. They understand how to work around the intricacies of your profession. And Matt, actually, you recorded a great little video today um, that had three points. They may actually be really pertinent for you to share right now, almost like a redo. Well, I, I'll make it shorter than the video. But, but the idea is many of you think that what you want to do in the world of marketing but, but you just don't have the experience or the expertise. And, and, and I just want to put that into context. So many of you say, I've helped thousands of people retire. You've only, you only get to retire once. We've done 7,000 episodes for advisors and a quarter of a million social media posts. When we say, hey, don't start with four podcasts a month. You're going to burn out really fast. Guess what? We know what we're talking about. The, the, the second one, has all all to do with sponsorship would you you are the sponsor of your show it's brought to you by your financial services firm don't cheap out and want to try to get defer the cost and then the the last thing is really is really experience right the fact that you have to have somebody in your corner who's going to help you get good behind the microphone and if you don't have that mm -hmm. Yeah. Versus just helping you push something out. Yeah. That would be not much different than what's a good example of analogy from an advisor to a client perspective there, maybe giving them access tell them what to do, but not access the software or vice versa, stuff like that. Absolutely. It, it, or, or there's a lot of things like, like that, but it, just being able to overarching, make, make a, a statement about a, a specific product or service, but never providing them with any access to further education or the execution of being able to do that stuff. And I think that's what financial advisors get frustrated with all the time. Kirk is there are all of these social media we call finfluencers, right? Who are out there chirping in the ears of your clients and you have to rise above that noise. If you don't rise above that that noise, you're going to get your lunch eaten by some schmuck on TikTok. We said we were going to be nice about Finfluencers. Yeah, I, I'm sorry. Yeah, I, I, I they're, went over the They're not, they could be schmucks, but they could be 
well-intentioned and very intelligent people with a lot of experience who've had bad experiences potentially with financial professionals um, trying to do their own thing. Or they're talking about, a lot of times it's a perspective. So their audiences are people very similar to them and they've had similar experiences. So they're helping them navigate that. So sometimes I think the intentions are different and sometimes schmucky, sometimes um, purposeful, meaningful contributions to society. But the reality is, is they are not the ones who are typically doing this are not regulated, which isn't necessarily a bad thing because I know lots of people that we know would prefer to do a podcast without, um, without that compliance, but that compliance is in your interest, best interest. So, um, I think do it within the context of your, of your business model, unless you, you've been told you can't even do thought leadership, which is ouch, <laughs> going to be very difficult, which is when you move. It's just, yeah, I, I, yeah. At some yeah. point they're, 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 you're, you're going to leave, which, which actually really leads us to a, a, another, another point here, which is actually my favorite point. Cause I've heard you say this many times on this show, which is, you know, get into the market and invest now. So this is what advisors say to their client, get into the market and invest. Now the best time to plant a tree or invest was 20 years ago. The next best time is today. So take that one. How, how many people put off doing something thinking they'll just catch up while they're started I do. I am starting to get worried for advisors who haven't even really considered thought leadership or who haven't started it. It doesn't mean you need to go hire a company to run a podcast twice a month like Proudmouth, but you have to be exercising your thought leadership muscle. You have to get comfortable doing media. You have to set actions and habits to get that to to record or document that thought leadership. And then you have to get practiced at, at packaging and sharing it. And if you don't, if you're not starting to do that and experience that and understand it, you're missing all the opportunities to get the ROI or the return on influence, which are, are so powerful in a business. And Matt, do you want to go through the return on influence? I'm not, I know you do fairly often, but it's worth repeating a hundred percent. Well, I then thank you for that because I think, I think you're right. And, and, and just to, before I jump into that, the idea you think is I'm right. Well, I do. I think you're right a lot, dude. Cheers to that, brother. Um, so I think you came up with the return on influence. I don't, I mean, we may have come up with the term, but I think you're the one who ultimately decided on the five things that you talked about. Well, good for me. <laughs> I don't remember where a lot of this you're stuff pretty, You're pretty, you're. You're pretty All smart. Right, so color. return on influence. So, 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 but very quickly. So, so I want to just touch on what you were talking about. The best time to start influence marketing was 20 years ago. Those advisors or those people who have 50 videos, a hundred podcasts, a really robust social media thing, they are so far ahead of you because they have so much more social proof. But here are the real quick, the five ROIs, five returns on influence. Number one is the best client communication tool you're ever going to have, right? This is the best way for you to build influence with your clients and get, stay top of mind when it's convenient. Um, that also is that the, the content that you create has intrinsic value, right? And so that's one of the big returns on the investment. The second one, it's the easiest thing to refer to. In fact, Bill Cates, when he was on this show and, and I talked to him often, one of the things that he consistently says to me is, Matt, it's so much easier to refer somebody to a podcast than call my guy. Right now, luckily, he has an entire program built around re referrals, but part of that referral system is having thought leadership that you can drive people to. So that's number two. Number three, greater share of wallet, right? And so, so it's easier to sell an existing client a new product than it is to get a new client, right? And for some of you, you have the misconception that you have 100% of your client assets. You're wrong. 75% of you don't. That's actually just a statistical fact that has been played out repeatedly over studies with the general public. You have the opportunity to bring new ideas. And my favorite one is this. I'm going to digress just for a quick moment. Um, one of our clients brought an estate planning attorney on. And he asked the estate planning attorney, he said, Jane, hey, do you have like a whole desk drawer full of trusts that have been signed and you've been paid on, but have never been funded? And Jane was like, yeah, totally. I got a lot of those. And he's like, well, what, what do you suggest that our listeners do? And she said, well, they should probably fund the trusts. And after that podcast went out, our advisor got phone call after phone call after phone call saying, hey, I don't know if you know this, but I've got $250,000 sitting in a bank CD that I was going to use to fund this trust. Can you help me put that to work? Oh my God, that's freaking printing money. All right. So that's a number three. Uh, number four, centers of influence. And this is my favorite one 
hands down. If you use, we have grown our entire business with this model. All right. You bring on people who have greater audiences than you that are within your sphere of influence who can potentially refer you business and you get them to come on your show. Now, I want to say this, and this is very true and very clear. You bring on a really high end CPA on your marketing podcast, your advisor podcast. That's basically them endorsing you as an advisor, because why would they be on your show if they didn't think that you were worthy of being a host of them and asking them questions. So you are getting basically the two words that you all hate endorsement and testimonial from a third party, right? Just because they're on your show. And then they share the show with their network. We call it concentric circles of influence. But the last one is what all of you want to know about, which is net new assets. If you do all of those things that we're talking about, use it as a referral source, create great content, build relationships with centers of influence, sell new products to existing clients, they are going to refer you into new business. And so those are the those are the five ROIs. I hope that didn't take that long. Yeah, it yeah, it doesn't. You said something I want to make sure listeners understand is you you can look for guests to be on your show that have larger audiences, but you can get guests that have smaller audiences, but engaged audiences who are our ideal audiences. And sometimes you can just find people who add a lot of value to what your clients need to hear and your audience needs to hear and not even worry about it. And that happens. And we do that all the time. Sometimes we have somebody on who might not be all perfect um, as, as, as a guest and checking all the boxes, but they add a lot of value. We bring them on because we think our audience is going to want to hear about that. And sometimes it even stretches a little bit outside finance marketing and we just feel it's really good stuff and they're good people and we bring them on. So, all right, we got time for a couple more. You ready? So the next one is plan, 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 stick to the plan. How many, I've seen stats, I'm not going to quote them, but I think it's around, it's less than 25, 25, 30%, if I remember correctly, our stats on how many financial advisors have business plans. Business plans, not marketing plans, just business plans. Yeah, well, the really, what's what's really the difference? I don't know, Joe Lucas would argue with you on that, brother. <laughs> well, but he, marketing the is difference a component is of that business a business plan. A business plan would talk about your business model and your services, but they're all interconnected. And so, but let's, let's just say a marketing plan. How many financial advisors have marketing plans? Let's just say 25 is the high end. It's not enough. You wouldn't advocate for a client not having a financial plan. Although we all know financial professionals who don't care whether you have a financial plan because they're selling products. And it's the same thing here. Don't get sold a product, right? One marketing tactic that isn't part of a bigger plan that doesn't consider it. And look, a plan doesn't have to be a 20 page Google doc. It, it can be a one page um, summation. It could be a mind map. Just understand what you're doing. Communicate that to your team or the or the marketing people that you're you've, you're working with, or even just for yourself as a reminder. You don't have to refer to it every day, but you definitely need to be um, you need to have a a journey like an end game and where you're going and what you're how you're going to get there, and then how long it's going to take, how much it's going to cost, what your expectations are, um, how things are going to work together. Make sure you got there's synergy is one of our rocket boosters, which is one of those seven areas that we talk about is it have a synergy, all kinds of neat things, but have a plan. It doesn't take that long to do, but make sure you have one. It's critical. I believe that you should have a 12 to 24 month marketing plan somewhere written by somebody, if not you. And we actually have some great strategic partners in our Pod Rocket Academy who can help you create a really, really clear and succinct marketing plan. And we've got some great courses in there. But okay, so so the last one that we're going to finish with today, which is my absolute favorite, is don't get advice, investment advice from your uncle. And you and I hear this all the time, all the time. Like, I mean, not don't get investment advice from your uncle, but elaborate on that, will you? Well, it's happening a lot, right? And I mean, it's happened for, just think about how many people were told social media is the holy grail of marketing for financial services. Just think about how many people told seminar marketing was the holy grail. Just to think about how many people were told a book. 
I remember this audio CD thing. I remember those many years yeah. ago. Came in a little package. Yep. Oh, that was the whole dude. Deal. You used to be able to also send DVDs to your clients. Do you remember when that was a big deal that you would professionally shoot a video yeah. and physically send DVDs to your clients? There are people that say podcasting is, it's not the Holy grail. It, it is not the Holy grail. Video is a big one right now. Everybody wants to be on video and you should be on video. But if you're just doing video and you haven't got all this other stuff figured out, right? No diversification of marketing video is going to be tough. How, we, from time to time, we have, we come across somebody who has done a whole bunch of podcasts who hasn't pushed them out to the world, <laughs> hasn't spent any money sharing them, distributing and talking about in their social media. Now, now some of those have, might have um, high, high net worth or ultra high net worth audiences, and they don't need to put it out on Facebook. They want to send them in privately. Th that's okay. But for most of you, 99.9%, .9%, you need to have, you need to find the diversification, the synergy, and you need to have all kinds of marketing in place. And that's really the way it goes. What do you think? It's interesting that you took that that way. Cause when we talked about this ahead of time, that don't get investment advice from your uncle, well, maybe I just took it in a very different direction. So I'm going to take that in a that different happens. direction that we're going to kind of wrap up. <laughs> so so what we hear all the time from, from people is, oh, I know a guy who has a band who has some audio equipment. They're going to run my podcast for me. Or my, my nephew has got 300,000 followers on Instagram. I'm just going to hire her. They're not experts. They're not professionals. They're, they are in a, it's, it's like, oh, well, I'm just going to take investment advice from my CPA. I know how to get, I know how to get you connections on Instagram. That's all you need. Let me just build up your following. Yeah. Follow what? <laughs> you don't have any thought leadership. You're not doing any videos. You don't have a social media person to consistently put it out. Like what's the point of having an audience and where did you build that audience? And like, is that audience even the right people uh -huh. that you want to have your, your nephew's Instagram following? Cause they're all probably Gen Z, right? I mean, they're probably not your ideal client profile. Anyway, I just wanted to go ahead. and. Another really tricky one is SEO. I've heard so many people come and talk about SEO. And the reality is, is SEO works can, can work well for you, but the amount of dedication is significant. Anybody says they can do it quickly is lying to you is a lot of work. You have a lot of authentic content. You got to have content that's being searched. Some people have are specialists and the things that they need people to look for, to find them, they're not looking for, they don't know. They don't understand your sophistication. They don't understand the problems. They're looking for simpler stuff. Now, if you're doing awareness campaigns and you're generating and you're educating people so that they can start looking for that stuff. That can be good. But SEO works, only works when people are searching for the stuff that you're selling or talking about. And if that doesn't exist, SEO is not worth doing. You could do it for some basic reasons, have a Google My Business, something like that, so people can find you and you've got some simple boxes checked. But going after SEO when it's not right for you and your audience and expertise is a, is a huge waste of money. And how many people have been duped into that? But that's the thing, Kirk. That's what's so frustrating to us is people who truly want to help advisors stop being the best kept secret in their area. Listen, we're sorry that it's not faster. Look, if we could, we already are influence accelerators. We're helping you accelerate it as fast as humanly possible and with a proven system and technique. Listen, if we could get you at results in six months, man, Kirk and I would have signed up for that forever. We'd be richer than astronauts, but that's not reality. What's really interesting though is the longer you do this, the more power you have to accelerate. So one of the things that, that we're looking at, I don't know. I should be well, talking hold on. It, it, so let's just do pause because we're running up on time. So is this our next episode where you cares going? about this time? Where's this constraint? Come from minutes. You? Don't, don't make me have to, pu to punch you. I'm going to punch you in the Okay. Throat. Look, if our podcast is good enough and they get off the train because of the standard commute or out of the car 
is 27 minutes or a walk. No, they don't. Please, They're yeah, going to keep no, listening. No, they don't. And you, you're the only weird person in the world who does that anymore. I know you listen well, to Well, how many podcasts. people have two hour podcasts and have huge numbers? People want to listen to because them. Because those people who to. listen don't have freaking jobs. They're way more interesting our than me. People, I get that. Our people have I get that. Jobs. No, here's the best part is we, you and I need to do this more often. So I'm going to stop you there and I'm going to make sure that we go ahead and whatever you're going with with your brain, we're going to have as our next episode. Fair? You need to write it down because you're going to freaking forget those. So we need to write it down. Basically, there's a certain point where you have enough content, enough assets that you can start running campaigns to, to drive awareness fairly inexpensively and very efficiently. And that's escape velocity, right? That but you have to have done the work, right? Do the work. Where did I hear that today? I was listening to Lizetta Rainey Braxton podcast. Oh, it was actually JAQ. Jacqueline Campbell, she had, um, and I came across it in social media. What a crazy thing. Um, I follow people there. I, I look for who they, they talk about and Lizetta, that's a huge mantra of hers. Do the work. She has different perspective on what do the work means, um, come from her, her worldview. Um, but do the work applies to a lot of things. And when it comes to thought leadership, put the work in, I don't know if you remember, but I know I'm going over, but I don't care because I've lost because I don't care. Control of the yeah. show, dude. I like you a lot, and you're a really wise, dude. But sometimes, it yeah, just, just keep going, just keep going, whatever, man. We have a book or a guidebook or what PDF, <laughs> ebook, whatever you want to call it, called 14 Marketing Tactics." Not marketing tactics. What the heck is the name of the thing? I know you I wrote the damn thing. While, I know exactly. But what you're I talking. used I used to say the fifteenth thing of lessons or something like that. The fifteenth lesson is this. It's a bonus. It's a bonus lesson, and what it is is that if you put the work in, there'll be a point in time where an opportunity comes along that you'll be ready for. That is very. If you have momentum marketing in place, when that opportunity comes along, you're ready to hit it. And I can. I'm going to tell you something. We have done a lot of work and the opportunities are coming and we're ready for them. Most of them, <laughs> but we're really close to being ready for all of them. I, it feels like that. And that's, we're like five and a half years into this thing, 400 episodes, um, very committed social media presence, branding. And that, that doesn't count the, that doesn't count the, 20 years that you were doing this before and the six, seven years that I was doing this before, right? It, it's, it's, that's, that's what I want everybody to really glean from this. Yeah. It's and there are different thresholds of being ready, right? Because before you and I met, I had momentum in certain things, right? I, I had a good, but it was with a smaller audience. It was still, it was good, but we keep escalating that, but we're, we're proud of this and it's a really fun place to be. And we thank all every one of you for listening to us and talking about us and hanging out with us. And I hope we can do, do more and meet more of you at events. And we're working on some other stuff. I haven't even talked to you about yet, Matt, <laughs> to connect with our listeners and our friends, but um, it's a, it's just keep at it, but don't think that you can avoid it and then just catch up. It's really hard. You have to earn this. You have to do the work. It's not easy but it is really rewarding. You learn a heck of a lot about yourself, about your thought leadership. I was showing somebody the other day, I, my expertise doc, my visible expertise doc. I'm not sure why it's called that, but, and I've got 173 pieces of content in there just from the last couple of years. And it's a great place. And I don't always throw everything in there, but most stuff I, I put in there. So it's a, it's a notepad. But you want to have something like that. At least start creating that. When you think of something interesting, some something that your client talked to you about, something that you read and you have opinion an opinion on, put it in there. All right. The best time to invest was when you're 25 years old. The second best time to invest is today. 
you advisors say that all the time. You have somebody come in who's 55 years old who has not really even started. So what do you do? You do whatever you can to accelerate their investments so that they're going to be as successful. You tell them how long they need to work and tell them how much they need to invest. Marketing is no different. So for Kirk and for all of us here at Proudmouth, this is Matt Halloran. We'll see you on the other side of the mic very soon. Thanks for listening to the Top Advisor Marketing Podcast brought to you by Proudmouth. If you want to know more about how you can be your own loud, visit us at proudmouth.com and sign up for the Pod Rocket Academy. Through courses and office hours led by professional podcast producers and digital marketers, you will learn everything you need to know to become the trusted subject matter expert you were meant to be.